is best understood by imagining the Barack Obama campaign. The reason Barack Obama won the Democratic primary and Hillary Clinton lost was because she put together an organization and he put together a movement. And he tapped into the emotions and the psyche and the aspirations of people while she was just doing the mechanics. This has got to be a campaign with balloons, with posters, with music, with hype. This has got to be a pep rally. This has got to be a Sunday morning celebration. This has got to be a revival. This has got to be as dramatic uh, an effort as the civil rights movement. And instead of being animated in our response to racism, we're being animated in response to consumerism. And we are um, inducing a sense of excitement. I know one church that asks every single Sunday, who's paid off a bill this week? They don't wait, we, we do it for Sunday. Um, but on fourth Sunday, we stop the whole service and we let people testify that I paid off three credit cards, I paid off five credit cards, I paid off my student loan, I paid off my house note, I paid my cousin, you know, every fourth Sunday. But I'm thinking we may go to every Sunday too. That's a great idea. We have uh, special events. For instance, uh, we have this month a campaign to have people bring their car notes into the church and people sit down with them to analyze how much interest they're paying and we then consider whether or not our credit union can refinance their car loan. We've had credit card offer Sundays where back in the day when banks would just send you a credit card offer and say you've been pre-approved for a gold card even though you've been unemployed for five years. Uh, we've asked people to bring those offers to the church unopened to really dramatize our need to not yield to temptation. Because if you get enough of those letters, you're gonna open one and one of them is gonna to get to you. That's why they keep sending them. We've had a pay down, save up competition where we recognize people who pay down the most bills and save up the most money. We've had defree rallies, defree revival. We have defree posters. We have defree drop boxes, defree mortgage refinance, anything that keeps the movement going, that keeps D free in the minds and hearts of people. Uh, we're about to have D free t-shirts and D free sweatshirts and D free merchandise so that people have a sense of movement. This cannot be a program because programs have not worked. It's gotta be a sense of uh, movement and enthusiasm. You've gotta, you, you've gotta have um, uh, all of the elements of a campaign. Now what we've learned about success is this, there's certain things that must be in place in a church setting for this to work. Number one, the senior pastor. This cannot be delegated to a committee, this cannot be assigned to a group. The senior pastor has got to be the chief spokesperson and number one cheerleader for this cause. It's got to come from the senior pastor. If it does not, then it's going to become like the scholarship club or some sideshow that people feel, oh, that's their project. That's number one. Number two, buy-in from the senior leadership because as, as all of you know, the pastor is not the only pastor in the church. You've got the pastor who heads the usher board. You've got the pastor who leads the choir. You've you got all these sub-pastors floating around the church, and you've got to get all of them on board, what, what I suggest is that you start by having a, a seminar just for church leaders, just for church leaders, half of whom are broke, but they don't want you to know it. So you have it, and what you say to them is that we're having this for you so that you can get ready for what we're going to do with the people, but the fact is they're broke. Church leaders are broke. Deacons are broke. Trustees are broke. Choir presidents are broke living from paycheck to paycheck, three weeks away from unemployment or homelessness. So, so you have to get the leadership on board, the pastor and the leaders have to be on board. Then you've got to find some people who will really work on the mission. That's what Ralph does, the D-Free Committee, people who come to church and like the ushers come to church to usher and the deacons come to church to deacon 
The D free people come to church. That's their mission. That is their ministry. Those are the key elements. It's got to start at the top. You, you've got to have a plan. You've got to have a launch, some kind of launch that gives recognition to the fact that you're not trying to sneak this in the back door. This is a major priority for the church. You, you, you're going to uh, be inclusive and comprehensive, and, and you can bring in outside speakers. We brought in Crown Ministries for our leadership launch. And then we brought in speakers from other places. We had a D-Free Revival and D-Free Sunday School classes. But it's got to be so high a level that nobody in the church can say honestly, I didn't know we were doing that. You've got to go visit auxiliaries and ministries and, and take up 15 minutes before choir rehearsal and explain to them, here's where we're going to the point where people get sick of you. They get sick of hearing it. And I've told, I've told people here, I'll stop talking about it when y'all stop needing it. You got to preach sermons. You know, the problem with the prodigal son was that he could not accept the notion of delayed gratification. Now, we talk about him sleeping with hogs and chasing women, but his core problem was he couldn't wait for his money. He was in the will, but couldn't wait till daddy died. That was his core problem. So he wanted to buy a BMW before his father even died to leave him the insurance. That was his core problem. And there's a, there's a direct relationship between sin and our inability to manage money. So we have to preach, the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 7, that the borrower is servant to the lender. That means that we're signing up for slavery. Now you can call it what you want, but this is slavery part two. Part one was when we were dragged from Africa on ships and worked like animals. Part two is when we sign up for expenses we can't afford. That's slavery. And we're living, we're living now, I believe, in slavery part two. And D3 seeks to use a campaign style movement to break this second slavery that we're in. First slavery was not our fault. Second slavery, we're signing up for, and we were better off in the first slavery because at least in the first slavery, we knew we were slaves. I mean, Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois disagreed on how to get out of slavery, but they agreed we were in slavery. It's not like one said, well, we're not really slaves. We, we all knew we were slaves. We had different ideas about how to get out of slavery, but there was no question that we were in slavery. Now, we don't know we're in slavery. And we, we are drowning. I was shocked to find out that 54% of our people were either unbanked or underbanked in 2010. So, so the how is one that we have to work on progressively because you're going to come up with a how that's different than our how. And then what we're going to do is share your how with everybody so they can do what's working for you. But if we don't do this, the next generation is going to be ignorant and broke. And the immigrant community that comes to this country understands these principles instinctively. They don't shop for therapy. They don't care about the newest styles. They work cooperatively in all of the things that we say we ought to be doing. They are doing. And they're doing it because they're, they're taking care of fundamental business. Um, we're putting up a website, and hopefully that website will be interactive enough for people who want to do this to really rely completely on the website to get the information they need, to get the help they need, to get the resources they need. Now, Clayton, what we do finally is um, we ask all of our partners to sign an agreement. And the agreement basically says it's a licensing agreement. The agreement says St. Luke Baptist Church will have permission to use the D-Free logo, the D-Free materials, the D-Free everything. You'll be a D-Free church. You just take it. We don't want any money. All we want is for you to promise you're not going to charge people for D-Free activities, you know, that, that you're not going to bring in some uh, some 
snake oil salesman and blame it on D free. <laughs> that you'll uphold the integrity of what we stand for. That's all, that's all we want. We want people to do this the right way and do it, not turn this into a money-making scheme, but, but to use it to serve people. And we will keep creating both strategies, merchandise, and products so that starting with churches and, and then going to credit unions, student organizations, and community groups, they, they will take a version of it to do their way. And we will just continually come up with more things that people can use to keep, keep people excited and focused and hold them accountable to this goal of, of debt-free living.